Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much to uh, Thymio Metropolis and the Chakos Foundation for the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, you won't be surprised, I hope, to know that um, as Chief Executive of the Baltic Exchange, I shan't be making um, strong, forward-looking predictions about the dry cargo market. There are two reasons for that. One is that um, it's... Is that better? Oh. I shan't be making strong, forward-looking predictions about the um, dry cargo market. Two reasons for that. One is that such predictions have an unfortunate habit of turning out to be wrong. Um, and the second is that as the main provider of uh, benchmark indices to the marketplace, it wouldn't really be appropriate for me to try to tell you what they might be tomorrow, next week, or next year. However, um, I thought I would pick up some of the themes which have been uh, touched on this morning and perhaps carry them through into the dry cargo market. Um, the, the main theme is that the world is changing and I think the world attention on shipping is changing. Um, no longer will shipping be able to uh, operate in isolation. We have a, a slight tension I think where we um, tend to want to uh, be well thought of, but at the same time, we also want to carry on our business in a very private way and not be talked about, not be examined, not be regulated, not be supervised. And I think that in all of those aspects, um, shipping is, is gravitating towards the way in which the rest of the world behaves. And I think I've got a, a couple of examples of that. Um, as you know, um, the Baltic Dry Index saw um, the most uh, extraordinary rise over the course of the first decade of the, of the century and has since collapsed back not to um, a continuation of appalling rates, but actually to rates which are not wildly different from those which we've seen historically. But what you do see in this chart is a continuation of the volatility that we saw during the, the uh, noughties, as we call them. Um, so what you see is, yes, um, rates which have come back to historic norms or a little better than historic norms in many cases, um, but also a continuation of the volatility. And I think that has an impact on some of the things I'm going to say. From the Baltic's perspective, what we see is dramatic and rapid change in the marketplace to which we need to respond. So the ships which are traded are changing and the routes which are traded are changing and therefore the Baltic benchmarks are changing extremely fast and and whilst we recognize that um, benchmarks have to be stable in order to be usable and it's noteworthy that all of you in the marketplace are using the Baltic benchmarks more and more in your trading activities um, and we recognize that we also to make sure that they are credible we need to have to keep them in line with the reality of the marketplace. That means that we've made the Cape size ship a substantially larger ship from 172,000 to 180,000. We've changed the routes which are used in the, in the time charter average to accommodate the um, China-Brazil-China -China round and to diminish the significance of the trip back from the east to the Atlantic. We are working very hard on adjusting the size and potentially the routes of the Supermax index. Um, there are some people here who have expressed a certain amount of discontent to us over the last couple of years, and, and the answer is we do listen and we do respond. Um, the Panamax will need to change to a Kamsar Max, and the uh, handy size will need to be adjusted as well. So, and we, and we need the engagement of the marketplace as we bring about these changes, which are very necessary to ensure that what we report on a day-to-day -day basis is credible and accurate. I think, though, my first point was about the shipping market becoming more part of the, the rest of the world, if you like, and I think that's visible in some of the uh, changes which we're seeing. Um, if you consider the freight derivatives market, um, that is now falling into the changing regulatory environment that we see in all derivatives markets. Um, MIFID, EMIR, Dodd-Frank having an impact. The market abuse regulation, the market abuse regulation does not just affect 
the um, derivatives market, it can also affect the physical marketplace because to influence a physical market with a view to bringing about an effect or a benefit in a derivatives market is now something which comes under the regulatory purview of the European Union. So um, we are being drawn inevitably into this world. Um, the regulation of benchmarks itself, our own business, um, is becoming something which, the, uh, which is a source of focus, following the scandals surrounding LIBOR, Forex, etc. We know that we do a great job, but the regulators generally look at benchmarks and say, well, uh, these people need to be supervised. So I think shipping is being approached by regulators and supervisors, not just in, the, in what happens on the water, which of course has been uh, a huge focus for many, many years, but in terms of what happens in the marketplace. And I think there's no going back from that. Uh, thank you.